Next question is from Taylor Dinkle. You guys seem to be pretty confident. Do you have any tips on cultivating confidence in life? Oh, gosh. You know what's funny? The minute you stop caring. Dude, we are the best. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> We're the most confident. <laughs> you know, the minute you stop caring about um, what people think about you. Now, not all people. I think it's important to care about what important people care about you, like your the, the good friends that you have and family members and your kids. But once you stop caring about what everybody else thinks about you, then you just be yourself. Mm. And it, and here's the other side of it. Do you want people to like you for being yourself or do you want people to like you for being someone fake? Because yeah. uh, that's an important thing to kind of understand. I too. think it's like developing a muscle. You know, it's a, the confidence is something that, uh, you know, it comes after you start to understand yourself more and, and you, you're secure in the way that you are. So like all your flaws in consideration and uh, really like just – owning it if it's something you want to change is it comes from within like if if you're relying on other people to tell you you know this that the other too much about their feedback as opposed to your own uh you know pursuits i think you know that's something to evaluate but i i think it's just something that it just grows and develops uh you know the more you you, you bring back like your own like wh- what do i want to do what you know where do i want to go with this what do i want to learn what do i want to change about my own uh, you know, body of things that are obvious to me uh, and just like try as much as you can to bring it back to, you know, your your own uh, pursuits. Today you are you. That's truer than true. There's no one alive that's youer than you. Yeah, Dr. Seuss. That's right. I love that. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, uh, that's Maximus's quote that's on his Instagram page. And I think that like I was asked like, I don't know, it was a couple of weeks ago when I did um, my questions. Like if I could hand my son one quality and that was it what would it be and it was confidence and i think that's really what it is it's sal i think you hit it on the head like the, the reality is the the <laughs> the more you care less about it the more you confident you become mm-hmm. yeah and I, I remember this like in 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 high school like because i didn't have uh money i had crooked teeth i was the the skinny kid like grew up on the other side of the tracks like i didn't have in in the high school world i didn't have a lot of things that were working in my favor to become like a popular kid in school. And when you're a young kid like that, you care about that stuff. And the, the what I started to realize was as I was getting older and in, in, in growing up and in my teens, the, the more that I cared less about that and I was truer to myself and just was going to be me, the more people that I attracted. Like people are drawn to people that are like that. Mm-hmm. And so the people that I feel that struggle with this, they desire it so much that they get hung up on it. They're trying not to be them. They're trying to be somebody else to get the attention of other people. And this is what, what causes them to lack confidence is because they're not being real to themselves. They're trying to act a certain way or dress a certain way or be into certain things so other people will like them and they're not being true to themselves. If you just learn to be who you are, which should be the easiest thing you possibly could do, and be confident in that, that this is who I am and there's nobody alive that's like me. Mm-hmm. I'm unique. I'm uh, Every one of us are extremely unique and be confident in being different. You don't want to be normal. That would be the worst thing in the world is to be like other people. And so recognizing that you are so special, that you are so different, that you are so you, that nobody else can do you. And being true to that, you'll you'll people will gravitate toward you, and people will be drawn to you because of that. And so it's just learning to love yourself for who you are, and that includes all the quirkiness and the nerdiness and the different the, the things that make you different from everybody else. Don't allow other people that. And here's the other thing too, right? Because this is where this gets challenging, especially for young kids that are growing up, is when people tease you and put you down. The moment that you make the connection that when people tease you and put you down or make fun of you or point out the dip, the things that are different about you, that's a reflection of their insecurities. And so when you start to make that connection that it has nothing to do with you being unique or different, has everything to do with that person is projecting their insecurities on you, that should build confidence in you. Like, oh, wow, this person feels threatened by this thing that's different about me, even though they're teasing or pointing at maybe an insecurity of your own them doing so is a reflection of their own shit. Once you realize that and you stand firm in who you are and you're like, fuck yeah, I am that person. I am confident about that. I am I am who I am and nobody can do me. And the, the, the more you solidify that, 
uh, I think the more confident you will yeah. become and the more people that you will attract. And you know what's different, difficult about this uh, particular conversation is I think it sometimes gets confused with um, I, I like who I am, therefore I never have to grow, change, or yeah. improve myself. Like, you know, I'm lazy. Uh, I don't take care of myself, but you know I'm confident and I care about myself. And that's it. You're mixing uh, two things up. Like one of the best ways to cultivate and build confidence is to seek growth, real growth, not like pretend growth that's driven necessarily by insecurities, but rather challenging yourself and overcoming challenges. That builds uh, confidence. If you want a child to be confident. You allow them to encounter challenges. They got to be tested. And to fail and to try again and then to succeed. It's an amazing thing to watch when a kid, they've done studies on this. Kids that are, that are raised this way will work on a puzzle much longer than other kids. They'll keep going, keep going to try and figure that puzzle out. So confidence is also built that way is that, you know, I'm not perfect. That's okay. I'm comfortable in my skin. So it's okay. I'll I'll tell the truth and I'll I'll have that integrity. But I'm also trying to be a better person. I'm also trying to grow. Those things are simultaneous. It's or, and they they work together. It's not one or the other because I think sometimes people think, oh, you know, you just got to love who you are. So therefore, that means I'm not going to grow because that's who I am and I love me. You know, that doesn't mean uh, that, that that's not what that means. No, that's the difference between confidence and cockiness. Right, somebody who's or narcissism. Yeah, that's it's cockiness, right? You think you you think that you you've arrived and that you're somebody who is confident doesn't ever think that way. They think that they're, that's right. That somebody who is really truly confident knows that, that that you know what is the what's the the stoic thing to say is that I know that I'm I, I know that I am wise because I know that I know nothing. Right? You are forever in pursuit of growth. And you are forever looking to grow and be better. And that's what makes you confident is being okay with, okay, I lack in this department. Oh, mm -hmm. I could be better here. I'm going to continue to push that way. Yep. When you're the other person, when you think you've arrived and you're smarter right. than everybody else, you're better than everybody else, you're more popular. Now <laughs> you you're cocky. You can recognize other people out there better than you at things. Yeah. Dude. And you're fully like okay with that. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. I mean, if you, I'll give you an example from a fitness standpoint, from a trainer standpoint. The trainer that lacks confidence is the trainer that pretends to always have the answers when the client has a question or a problem. Even though they don't know the answer, yeah. they're not confident enough to say to their client, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Confident trainers say, I don't know a lot to their clients. They'll say things like, I don't know, but I'll find out for you. That's uh, what real confidence looks like. Fake confidence looks like, I got this all under control. I know everything. I'm the man or whatever. You know, Look at me, check me out. That's a projection of uh, of insecurity. It reminds me of the you know I was a I was at eating dinner with Jessica. And we were eating at an outdoor patio at Santana Row, right? And you see a lot of nice cars in that area. And if you eat it, if you live in San Jose area, you know Santana Row, and you know that you're going to see two or three Ferraris or a couple Maserati, hundred thousand or two hundred thousand dollar cars. And it was so funny that you'd see them drive by, and you know they'd be just driving by because there's a road there or whatever. And then every once in a while, one would drive by, and they would rev their engine super loud. <laughs> yeah. Hey, look at me! Look oh, at my man. like everybody's already looking at you. You know that's not confidence. That's it's insecurity. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. yeah.